you know, Ross A Stadium is no joke. I've worked there. It's a, it's a big venue, uh, natural turf. You look at it, it might be one of the best natural turf there is. The Orange Zone, sponsored by Billy Whitaker Cars and Trucks. What's up, what's up? Welcome into the award-winning Orange Zone podcast. I'm Tommy Sladak. We have Samantha Croston. We have Super Bowl champion James Mungro in the house. And we have Rachel Culver on the producer mic. A reminder, you can find every episode on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find every episode on our brand new Orange Zone YouTube page. So make sure you like and subscribe as we work to grow our content and grow this awesome team we have here. Coming up on today's episode, we're getting into the weeds with Syracuse Purdue. Do biggest game of the season so far for this SU team and one that I think will really help set the pace for the coming weeks. We're also going to recap that SU Western Michigan game. We're going to be getting into a little bit of an NFL talk. Got a few things on our minds. And then we have Rachel dropping some trivia here at the end of the show, as well as just our predictions for this Purdue game. So I'm going to open up to my uh, to my best friends over here. How we feeling? What's the vibe here heading into week three for Syracuse football? Go ahead, Samantha. I mean, week three, I feel the way that I have felt since week one, mm -hmm. which is that this would be the first real test. I don't think anybody was shocked that they won in week one. I don't think anybody was shocked that they won in week two. But I think week three, now you have a, a game that I really feel like is anyone's game. I feel like it's a pick em. That's how it feels to me. Not to mention, sold out crowd. It's the first is that road official? game. Fully sold out? That is official. Wow. I, saw, I saw that on several different websites, including Purdue Athletics that it was sold out. The student section is sold out. They also announced that. It's a first year head coach. It's a lot of vibes. And I feel like it is going to be a lot to overcome. It's going to be unique to see them in that situation where this is your first road test and there's going to be a lot of fans screaming. Well, I'm really excited uh, just for the simple fact that um, I would anticipate Syracuse scoring as many points as they did uh, coming into the season. And they're scoring. Their offense is rolling. I mean, they're rolling. And they got guys injured. People are stepping in places. I mean, you can't ask for the last two weeks. I mean, it's, it's been great for Syracuse. So I'm really excited to see what they could do with a little bit tougher opponent. But, you know, if they keep the ball going the way it's going now, you know, again, sky's the limit. I think that was one of the biggest, com not coming to earth, but – eye-opening moments was in that Western Michigan game when Aronde Gadsden the second goes down there in the first quarter. That is, by and large, the top target for Garrett Schrader. They have the best relationship. They've been doing it for a few years now. And to see that offense still put up 45 yeah. points without him, it just went to show you. I, I described it as Schrader looked like a conductor and his orchestra of receivers just played beautifully. And it was, it just had, it felt free flowing. Yeah. And, you know, previously before. That's a know, beautiful sentiment, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. That's art. Thank That's you. Just I'm going to come with more of those this season. <laughs> season two, I'm, I'm bringing the that heat, That was baby. beautiful. You, you know, previously he was really dominated on just one receiver. And, mm -hmm. you know, uh, last game I was really excited by seeing him throwing the ball around to all different receivers. A lot of people was getting involved in it, and you know that's that shows that players are now really hungry. And you know when someone goes down, the next person's ready, and it just showed last week. And it was Donovan Jones. You had Isaiah Jones in the mix. It was you're right. It was really spread out, and it was. Uh, I mean, the final score is forty eight to seven. Syracuse right now, offense and defense, top ten in the country. Um, the Orange and Oklahoma, the only two schools that can say that. And if you look at the points that they've put up in these first two weeks, what's not there on paper in the stats category is that the starters were out by the second half. Yes. Well, so that right. could have been even higher. But um, injury-wise, are you more interested to see how this receiving core does without Aronde Gadsden? Or are you more, Sam, looking to this offensive line that lost David Wallaball Jr.? They might be returning Kalen Ellis. They might be returning Joe Moore, who we haven't seen yet this year. But who are you more interested in seeing how they perform against mm. a better team? It almost feels like 50-50. But for mm. me, I, I'm going to say the O-line. Because to me, that would be the bigger question mark. That would be the thing that I feel a little more concerned about. And that was the area where we didn't felt, feel like it was necessarily the strongest point even coming into the season. Right. I feel like the receiving core, even Garrett Schrader today, Got the chance to speak to him at player availability this morning. And he felt, he seemed confident. He seemed like, again, we still don't know the status of Gaston's injury and whether or not he'll be back for this week. 
But Schrader seemed like he was in the position where he was ready to overcome that no matter what. He felt confident with all the other options that he would have available. <clears throat> and it was a next man up mentality. You could just feel it. Did you guys have a feeling of, uh, you know, oh bleep when their running back Jalen Buckley ripped off that 75 yarder? Did you have a moment like that? I, I really didn't. It, the defense that is a settle in, you know what I mean? It's, mm. you know, and I, I was, I'm really big on, you know, hitting big plays right off the bat mm. to set the tone right. You know, I was always big on that um, personally. But, you know, seeing that for myself, I, I don't get excited about it. I said, okay, let's, let's settle down. Let's, let's settle down and let's just play our ball. It happens. Let's get over it. And, you know, previously before, Syracuse weren't, wasn't able to get over the hump like that. They would, like, kind of pretty much go downhill. So it, it, they're showing me a lot of um, compose, um, composure. And, uh, you know, with, with, with saying that, you know, when you said the guys didn't play the second half at all, like previously in the years past, the guys, you know, they would keep the starters out there. You know, they didn't have the, the backups. Now they have the backups, so now they're able to play multiple people at different positions and, you know, give Schrader multiple options. And I, I feel really confident, like, this team is different from the previous uh, few years ago. Well, teams. I'm, I'm actually happy you said that because in my head I was thinking, I know we're obviously early into the 2023 season, but what differences do you see between this team and let's just say last year's team, for example. The backups. I mean, the, the backups. I really honestly believe the backups, and I don't know what Coach Babers did, but the kids are really believing into the philosophy, uh, what they're doing, and they're winning. Um, uh, every week they're getting better. Um, unfortunately, this past week the penalties were, were, st were still up again. Um, but a lot of those penalties came, Syracuse penalties came in the second half, mm -hmm. you know. And, and that's what, you know, rightfully so, that's going to happen. Uh, when you have uh, non-starters out there. But they're getting better every single week, and uh, the backups are really – they're hungry. I mean, they, they see they, they see light at the end of the tunnel, um, and they're playing together as a team. I mean, they're flying around the ball. Uh, you know, what was very impressive, um, that first um, long touchdown they had, uh, the running back, Allen, was down there blocking in the end zone. Like, that's, that's, that's championship ball. Everyone like that, that's championship ball. That's, that's a good team. Yeah, and and it shows again. I think it reiterates what the coaches say about Allen. Where what they loved about him last year is you have obviously an All American and Sean Tucker ahead of him. He was in there on special teams. He's like, all I wanted to do mm -hmm. was be on the field, and he's like, he was a team player through and through. And he just has that mentality where it doesn't feel like he's selfish at all, and he's just doing what he can to help this team out. But James, I just want to make one last note on that backup thing. I can't agree with you more because the most impressive thing really sitting back and looking at that game is it was 45 to seven at halftime. The starters are out in come mm -hmm. the backups on defense. Yes. No points in garbage time. Yes. Yep. Nothing. There wasn't even a chance where Western Michigan was going to kick a field goal. Yes. That's how dominant that defense was. And that was from the get go. They allow that touchdown. You just know that pissed them off. Yes. Justin Bear and Marlo wax. He's, they're talking to the U and they're like, that is not going to happen again. The backups get it done. Granted, the offense only ended up with a field goal there in the second half, but you were looking to burn the clock, and yeah. I was just so you, impressed you, you, with that defense. With, with, with that, with, with you know, in that mindset, you just try and get out, you know, get healthy, out of the game healthy. Right? I mean, that's yes. all it's about, just get out yeah. healthy, you know, take Garrett out, put the backups in, and uh, get out healthy and, and get more film work on the backups. Mm -hmm. 100%. Time. I mean, even backups aside, just the defense in general – like, I know that it doesn't go unnoticed, not here at this table and, and the fans and beyond the coaching staff. It's not just the fact that Syracuse is the only team in college football that has put up 100 points and only allowed seven. But it is the fact that this defense scores points game in and game out as well. They're on a streak with that. Yes. To me, that is the next level. That is, yes. we're hitting a different echelon of what this defense is able to do and add to the team when you're scoring as well. And just like we do every week, we try to get a little bit more insight into this opponent that maybe we can't provide. So we had Ashley Wenskowski. She caught up with the voice of the Boilermakers, Tim Newton, who gave us some really great insight into what we can expect from this Purdue team on Saturday. Welcome in everyone to the Orange Zone podcast. I'm Ashley Wenskowski here alongside the voice of the Purdue Boilermakers, Tim Newton. We're going to be previewing week three's matchup, Syracuse and Purdue football. Tim, it's great to have you join us. Ashley, great to be here today. All right, so let's start off. The Boilermakers 1-1 one one through the first two games of the season. I want to hear, what are your first takeaways from this team? Uh, first takeaways from this team are we need to stay away from bad weather uh, because we had some of that last week at Virginia Tech. I, I think, Ashley, it's still a work in progress. Ryan Walters is a first-year head coach. He's brought a 
new defensive scheme with them that I think has been a little bit uh, up and down, but but got better last week against Virginia Tech. And it's a it's a team that has a very difficult schedule in the middle of the year. So these September games are doubly important as Purdue tries to rack up some wins early in the season. Syracuse is in a similar boat with that in terms of the early or easier early schedule. What has impressed you from this team so far? Well, I think, first of all, the resilience. Uh, you had a really disappointing opening day loss, a 39-35 loss to Fresno State, a game that went back and forth, and Fresno State pulled it out in the last minute at Purdue. Um, and then, uh, so you go on the road for the first time in a very hostile environment at Lane Stadium in Blacksburg, had to sit through a five-and-a-half-hour uh, weather delay, which none of us had ever gone through before. Saw Virginia Tech come back uh, in that game from a 17 nothing deficit to tie the game and then went, found a way to win it in the fourth quarter. So I think, first of all, the resilience of this team. Uh, Hudson Card, I think, has been solid at quarterback. He hasn't, Purdue has not turned the ball over yet this year, which is uh, pretty amazing for the, this early in the season. And I think the defense, the defense has been a little bit hit and miss. It's, it's either three and out in a great series or they give up scores. Last week, they shut out Virginia Tech in three out of the four quarters. So we'll see if they can continue that this week. Now, that did go along with what you mentioned, Hudson Card, and your first-year head coach, Ryan Walters, with what I was going to ask next. How do you feel the leadership on this team has been when you have a first-year guy at head coach and a first-year guy at quarterback? Well, you know, it's difficult these days in the in the NIL and portal world where it's almost unrestricted free agency to, to keep leaders from year to year. I think it's instructive to know that Hudson Card decided to come to Purdue in December got on campus in January. So he had been with the team less than a year and he was the leading vote getter for captains this year. So Purdue has five captains, he's one of the five. So I think his leadership in the locker room is pretty well established. Ryan Walters is a young guy, 37 years old, one of the youngest FBS coaches. And I think he relates really well to the players. And I think that's helped a lot. Um, you've got some other leaders though on both sides of the ball. And I think so far, at least knock on wood for Purdue fans, uh, the leadership has been pretty solid. Uh, you're going to go through some more uh, adversity as the season goes on, so we'll see if that leadership can hold steady. But so far, I've been pretty impressed with what I've seen. Now, we all know what happened last year when Purdue and Syracuse faced each other. That last-minute Syracuse win on that Garrett Trader to a Ronde pass, and I think it was the last 10 seconds of the game there. How is that going to affect the air around this this year? Do you think there's an air of revenge for the Boilermakers? Well, there there is, but again, you have to go back a little bit to the fact that this is a lot different roster than it was a year ago. A lot of the guys that were involved in that game aren't here anymore. Um, but yes, the guys that were here certainly remember, and it was a game that Purdue trailed by 10 in the fourth quarter, came back and took the lead with less than a minute to play, but picked up an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on the extra point. And then when the coach came out to argue that, he got an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. So you kicked off from the 10, and, and Syracuse winds up scoring in the final seconds. Probably one of the more bizarre games we've seen. And, and I think the guys that were there last year are probably going to have that on their minds. So, you know, uh, we'll see. I don't know about revenge, but certainly it's a game that Purdue would like to win to keep that momentum going as then they head into conference play the next week. Absolutely. Do you think there is going to be an added atmosphere since this game is at night? It's the Big Ten Saturday night game and it's at home for Purdue. Well, they do open the bars here early in West Lafayette on Saturday mornings on game day. So I think the fans will be well lubricated yeah. and ready to go. It's a sellout crowd. So we're going to have more than 61,000. And yeah, there's a whole different atmosphere at Purdue in a night game. Uh, we saw five years ago in the Tyler Trent game when Purdue knocked off second ranked Ohio State. I think the crowd will be electric, I think, especially coming off that win last week against Virginia Tech. Um, it should be a pretty hostile environment. I'm looking forward to seeing how the fans turn out on Saturday. A little bit different than when I was at the Dome last year. What is your floor and your ceiling this year for Purdue? Well, you know, the floor... Um, I, it's, it's always hard to say in wins and losses because, uh, again, you don't know with a team like this, are you going to stay healthy throughout the season? Um, you know, I thought coming into the season, this was probably hopefully at least a six and six team to get back to a bowl. This is a little bit of a transition season with a first year head coach and a really difficult schedule. Um, after seeing them play a few times, I think six and six is still possible. I think seven wins is possible, maybe even eight. But I think it could go the other way, too, if you get injured at a few spots. Purdue's not very deep at the linebacker position. They've got some inexperience or at least 
guys in the secondary that haven't meshed so far. The offensive line is getting healthier, but if you have a person or two go down there. So uh, I know I've given you a complete non-answer. Uh, it could be okay. anywhere from, let's see, it could be anywhere from one wins to 11, but I think it'll be somewhere in there, you know, hopefully over the 500 mark to keep the momentum going, get Purdue back to a bowl and then build from there. I think the recruiting class for next year is already looking pretty good. So hopefully uh, Ryan will be able to take this uh, momentum into next season. Gotcha. And my final thought here for you, um, what are the keys for Purdue to pull out a win against Syracuse this weekend? Well, you know, last year, Garrett Schrader really hurt Purdue, especially uh, not only throwing the ball, but he came up with some big runs. So keeping him in the pocket, not allowing them to break a lot of runs. One of the big keys for Purdue last week, as opposed to the first week, first week against Fresno State, they converted 11 of 17 on third down. This week, Virginia Tech was only two of 12 on third down. So Purdue's defense was able to get off the field. So getting Syracuse off the field on third down, offensively continue to take care of the ball, no turnovers. And we've seen the Boilermakers here in the last couple of weeks come up with some explosive plays. I think they'll need an explosive play or two. Uh, Deion Burks is a big threat, as is Tyrone Tracy Jr., among others. So uh, those are some of the keys we'll be looking for. As long as there are no storms, though, in the area, and right now the weather forecast looks great for the weekend, uh, it should be a great night for football on Saturday night. Well, glad to hear it. We'll have our sports team out there, Tommy Sladek and Samantha Croston out in West Lafayette, and Tim Newton, voice of the Boilermakers. Thank you so much for joining us. Ashley, thanks again for having me. Great stuff there from Ashley and great stuff from Tim on letting us know what we can expect from this game. And getting into Purdue, again, this is going to be the biggest test for the offense. It's going to be the biggest test for the defense, special teams, you name it. It's just, it's a bigger program. It's the Big Ten. And just to give people quick, some quick fast facts off the top here of what this Purdue team is right now heading into week three. They're one and one. They have a loss to Fresno State in the opener, and then they beat Virginia Tech out of the ACC 24-17 to over the weekend on the road. Again, Blacksburg, not an easy place to play. They're under a first-year head coach in Ryan Walters, and they also have Aiden O'Connell is now with the Las Vegas Raiders, the quarterback from last year. In comes Hudson Card. Very unique, interesting name. Babers had a lot of good things to say about him. He says it's definitely the best quarterback will play all year. But, you know, it's impossible to ignore what I know SU fans and Purdue fans that are listening right now are thinking about. This game last year was one of the more exciting games I've ever seen and yeah, been around. It was. In, in just recent memory, it was a shootout with some absolute thrilling moments. And I would say that this Syracuse team, especially on offense, looks very similar to what we saw in that game, whereas Purdue cannot say the same. Defense a little bit different, but ultimately, it's going to be a big one. It's 7.30. It's prime time. It's on NBC3. We're heading out there. Sure so are. really looking forward to that. But what is the biggest question mark for you guys heading into this game? Or I should, should I say, what's the position group you're most looking forward to seeing how they perform against a higher, higher caliber squad? Well, I, I personally think, you know, just keep playing the way they're playing. Mm. It's not so much. Don't fix one, when that's, it's not broke. Yes. It, it's like, I mean, their intensity is very high right now. Um, and so don't don't worry don't worry about that at all. They're going to be intense. It's going to be a very intense game. Um, you know, fix the mistakes. But I, I really can't pick out one group. The special teams have been playing great. They're kicking the ball very good. Um, there's not really many flaws right now. Um, so you know, when you're playing these easier teams, you can get away with a lot of different stuff. So mm. this this like we said this week will be a good test. Uh, we should win the game. I, I'm very confident that we should win the game and as long as they go on the same mindset they've been going in uh, into the games. But um, it should be a little bit tougher. How do you deal with, especially for the first time in a season, how do you deal with that first road game environment, especially when you're going in and playing in a sold-out crowd? It, it, you know, the best thing ever is to play on the road. I, I love playing on the road. Mm. I love playing on the road. That's and a being, dog being, mentality. Yeah, being that is. Road, yeah, being a team on the road and the whole fans are like, they're leaving the stadium. You know, now the, op <laughs> the opposite side is <laughs> – you getting you know you're you're losing on the road and yeah. the fans are right. going crazy and you just can't get things together. But I don't foresee that happening. I mean, um, I mean they're playing together as a team and that's the biggest thing is believing to your believing the coaches what they're telling you. They're executing they're executing on the on the field very well. Special teams. I mean, there's not many flaws. So, you know, yeah, it'll be a little bit louder stuff like that. But in reality, is just go on the same mindset you've been doing. 
See, that's funny to me because I feel like if I was on a football team and I was playing on the road and I won, I would totally, I'd be like this, waving to all the fans. <laughs> Love you guys. You, 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 gotta, you gotta act like you've been there before. You gotta act like you've been there before. <laughs> what would you, well, I haven't. What would you guys tell, like, would you be able to tell that there was freshmen when, once you were, once you were an upperclassman, could you tell the first time you guys went into one of those environments, could you tell that the freshmen were maybe just a little bit rattled and how do you calm that? Well, uh, it's just, you know, take a deep breath. Take a yeah. deep breath. I mean, you signed up for this for that particular reason, to play in the big-time games, mm -hmm. big-time um, crowds and stuff like that. So, um, you know, just take a deep breath and go out there and just, just play football. I mean, that's what you're here for, to play football, and these guys are experts at that. So um, it, there's not really no rhyme or reason. Just go out there and play. Be yourself. Where, was there ever a time, whether in college or, or in the NFL, where you couldn't hear the QB? Like, was there ever a time where, like, Peyton's calling out an audible and you're like, I have no idea what he's saying? Of course. Yeah. There's, there's been some how do you this, How do you handle that? You read lips. You read lips and guess correctly. Guess. <laughs> That's but, awesome. But, but, you know, a lot of times, too, when it was really loud, too, um, Peyton would direct with his hands and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. uh, those multiple different nonverbals um, – that you would catch up on, you know, catch. Interesting. And but you know, yeah. you know, going back in college days, I do remember um, going to Tennessee. That's a different type of environment on away games. Oh yeah. Yes, you know, I mean, so there is, but Purdue doesn't have the the river and all that when they bring the yachts up and parking the yacht next <clears> to the stadium. So they don't have that at Purdue. But you know, certain stadiums it could be a little intimidating. But there's no better feeling of going to a home team and beating their butts pretty good, and then walking off and get on the plane and saying thank you. Who's up next? Oh, yeah, I bet. And, I mean, to me, though, the fact that they're away isn't the only challenge here. Like, to go back to your question before, what is the big question? For me, it's with a team that has a new first-year head coach, two of their best players gone in the mm -hmm. NFL, how different is the team that Purdue – is? how different is this Purdue team that they'll be facing compared to the team that they were facing last year? How do you scout that when you're scouting a new coach and you're scouting a new – I'd imagine it's a really different team you're seeing this year. Well, it's just like our team. Every year there's a new team, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, would say in that what you just said, Sam, um, like they lost two players. We've lost players too as well. You know, it's the same thing every year. It's going to be something new, uh, a different team, different um, – uh, different philosophies, uh, diff different team chemistry, um, but again, they're gonna go 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 back to you know the the bread and butter plays, uh, what got them there, and you know Purdue run the plays they normally run, and we're gonna do what we normally do. Any That's stats stand out to you about this Purdue team, or anything you wanted to mention as you looked them over? As I look them over, for me, it's it's the player to watch, and I do have my eyes on starting quarterback Hudson Card, six two, two hundred and ten pounds, Texas transfer. And I want to tell you what they're saying. This is something I read in an AP article that I thought was good insight. It says, first-year coach Ryan Walters raves about Card's mobility. Receivers like Card's arm strength and accuracy. And now, after a few months on campus, the Boilermakers are going all in on – on card as the next cradle of quarterbacks, which I didn't mm. know about that tradition at Purdue. And I feel like Brendan's saying this, but here's a stat for you. 15 former Purdue signal callers have gone on to play in the NFL, accumulating wow. more starts and throwing more touchdown passes than those from any other school. That's crazy. Isn't that kind of wild? I did not know that. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. And then player availability. You mentioned that you were at that. And we're, again, filming this on Tuesday. You'll be hearing this on Wednesday. What stuck out to you? Because you spoke with a lot of the a lot of the guys. I did, and I wrote down a couple of things about what they're saying. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know what? You ask me anything that you were curious about. Oh, okay. I like to and switch I'll, up. And I'll, and I'll tell you what the player said about it. Yeah. Um, how do you think – or did – did they say anything about just how they're feeling, knowing that they're already in that situation where they're plugging and playing guys that weren't in the starting lineup at the start of the season? So as far as they, they did mostly talk about Gaston being out, and Schrader said, he said, it's always going to be a next man up mentality. We don't know when he's going to be back, hopefully sooner than later. But for us and our team, it's business as usual. And I'm sure Mugro can attest to that. It always has to be that next man up, up mentality because – Injuries are inevitable. They what? happen every single year. In Rogers. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like you said, like, in, in, no, I got my start professionally from an injury, you know, and, and, and I was able to get a one star and end up playing for five years. Um, that's, that's where you make your name at. 
you know, and that's that's how it goes in, in any any league. When someone mm-hmm. gets injured, uh, next man up. And if you're if you're good and you're passionate about it, you're ready to go because that's your opportunity. You don't know when your next opportunity is going to be. Um, so, I, I honestly believe though this year is completely different from last year because they have backups and like and, and it's good to have people like unfortunately at Gatson's down right now. Um, hopefully he'll be back very shortly because we're going to need him throughout the whole year, you know. Um, but it, having backup is very, very key, a very, very big key. And we haven't seen that recently from Syracuse. We, you know, we all have been talking about we need to get these players and more players in at different positions. Now I think uh, they settled in and Dino has the guys that, they, that he wants and they're playing at a high level and, you know, just keep doing what they're doing. There's no reason to switch up anything, have the same mindset. The kids are in school now and everything. So just continue what you're doing. I think it would be a big plus for them if they were to get one or both of Joe Moore or Kalen Ellis back. So Syracuse mm-hmm. fans haven't seen either of them this year. They were very much hinted at being the two of the expected starters. Joe Moore at, at right uh, at right guard. He's a transfer from Richmond. So he, he could be back this week. Kalen, Kalen Ellis could be back. And I just think... You know, we talk about depth, and that's the one thing where sometimes when some of those starters go down, it's a major difference out there. Yes. So if we lose one and are able to get one back out there, I think that would be huge for them heading into Purdue. But um, let's get into a poll question. Got our game picks. What do we have here poll-wise for Syracuse fans? This will go up at midnight. This week's question is, which unit has impressed you the most in Week 2, Syracuse's offense or defense? It's such a simple question, but it's a great question answer that we want to hear from so vote on twitter and facebook at cnycentral.com and at instagram at the orange zone podcast we will reveal the results on next week's episode so we'll be talking about that make sure you're uh, commenting to us on on twitter we'll get back to you so game picks wise predictably everyone went 2-0 last week we were predicting the score against the spread um spread favorite syracuse right now favored by two and a half points i've also seen pick them i've seen pick them as well it depends on the side that you're looking on. Yeah, it's it's about where I thought. I think it's kind of a toss-up for most people. Maybe Syracuse with a little bit of a favorite just given how they've handled the first two teams. So let's do game picks. Then we have some trivia, if I'm not mistaken, Rachel. Yeah, we got okay. trivia. Great. All right, Is let's get into it. sleeping on us? Yeah, I, Rachel, was... I, uh, you were so, normally Brendan like interjects about something at this point. So <laughs> yeah. it's like, well, yes. Here's the thing. Brendan, yeah. and Brendan talks a lot, but he also misses a lot of cuts. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So the show is going to look better. The show is going to so look just, good. I'm just out here paying attention and keeping my mouth shut. Honestly, uh, again, dog mentality. <laughs> dog mentality. Dog mentality. Love Rachel. that. <laughs> Sam, you want to start us off? With the picks? With the picks. Hit us all with right, your all picks, right, all right, all right. I'm just going to go with the first thing that immediately came to my mind. This is just what I'm feeling. I don't know. I, I Maybe I'm not ready. <laughs> James, actually, are you ready? I'm ready. Like, okay. Go, fine, you go. 35-14. 35-14 Syracuse. What? Yes. You really think? Yes. That's astonishing. If you're right, I won't believe it. There's no way. That's, that's not close enough. 35-14. You know what's no, funny? No, can't be. Because you're thinking the same thing, Tommy? Because I'm right around that. You serious? Go. I'm 35-17. And Come on. That's, that's, yeah, I can, I can I, see that as well. I have not seen – I I don't think – Purdue is a, a better team than Western Michigan and Colgate, hands down. But I'm seeing a Purdue team that has allowed a few touchdowns from both teams. I'm seeing a Purdue team that has also been able to put up points – but nothing major yet. Again, it's a new coach. It's a new quarterback. They're searching for the identity. Searching for their identity. Mm-hmm. And I and as much as they might feel like they found it, I, I don't think it's there yet. I think you have to grow a little bit when you have such important new pieces in place. Um, I do think they're able to score on this Syracuse defense, but ultimately this feels like something that is – going to be up to the offense of whether or not they're going to be able to put up points because the defense is going to do their job. And I see it happening. You, you know, the question you asked before, I'm sorry, about the, the, <laughs> the fans. Yeah. I think it's going to be a 50-50 split because offense and defense both are playing great. It's, and, I mean, you can throw special teams in there as well. It's, it's a wild it's spot. Like, like so, normally <laughs> we're, we're, we're hunked on one and yeah. we're, we're concerned about the other. And yeah. it's, it, it is. It's it is so split. unfamiliar position that we're I know. in right now. It's got, look, <laughs> so it's a little spooky. Everyone, good, everyone have a moment of zen. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all just feel calm okay. for a minute. Things are yeah. feeling good right now. Yeah, and so I'm going to appreciate it. Absolutely. Are you ready? I'm, I'm ready now. Okay. 
Um, I always say I'm going to bet on Syracuse until I have a reason not to. And I don't have a reason not to. So I'm going to say Syracuse is going to win this one. But I'm going to go 28-21. Keep it close. I got to keep it close. I got to look at I'm, – I'm, I'm a new better. So I'm, I'm looking <laughs> at the spread. I'm looking at the odds. I'm really trying to lock into that. And I feel like there's a reason why they come up with the numbers that they do. So I'm going to stick closer to it. I'll go 28-21 Syracuse. Okay. Respect. I mean, I – James and I could be off by 20 points. We could be dead on. We're probably going to be in the minority of going that far of a gap, but it's how I feel. It's clearly how you feel. Yep. So like, prove me wrong. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's like, like, I mean, if it's not broke, don't fix it. <laughs> Dang, straight. Dang straight. Take All right. that to the bank. To end the pod, we got trivia time. Oh, yeah. Let's All do it. All right. So uh, of the game last year between. Noted uh, between Purdue and Syracuse. Okay. H- name every player that was drafted to the NFL. Name every player that was drafted from that game. From that played Jones. in that game. Okay. Charlie Jones Charlie and Aiden Jones, O'Connell. Aiden O'Connell, the wide receiver QB combo. Um, their tight end, I, I can't remember his name, but I feel like he might have gone to the league. Remember, he had that uh, unsportsmanlike conduct call that was huge when he scored yep. that touchdown in the that. final few minutes. Uh, yeah. 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 So again, we we have him. We have a circle. We just don't. We don't know the we name. We don't have a name off the top of our heads. Um, I don't think it's Mayor. I think it might be. I don't know. Um, Syracuse wise, Garrett Williams. Yep. Went to the Cards. He was still playing. Sean Matthew Tucker. Bergeron or Tucker was undrafted. Oh yeah. Bergeron Falcons, and um, Bergeron Garrett. There's only three. I think that was only yeah. So I think we have two from each team. Are we missing a Syracuse? Person? Yeah, I feel like, I feel like we are. Wait, can you say can you say the names again? Bergeron went second round. Williams went third round, and I I don't think anyone else okay. went. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and then I don't Purdue know why. wise, I feel like there's someone. Wait, the question was who got drafted or who's currently in the NFL? Who got drafted? Who got drafted? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So Tucker's not there. Would be yeah, two. no, Tucker wouldn't be yeah. there. There's only I don't two know guys. Why. I feel like yeah. Another one, but so two right. from Syracuse. We have the two from Purdue. I'm sure there's a third from Purdue. No one, Brendan, that we're just weren't re- wasn't really on our radar. <laughs> I feel like it's probably that tight end. I just can't think of his name. How So, is there a hint? In, in total you think there's 5? Yes. And what if I tell you that's not right? Well, wait, then I, I would tell you that there's 6. Okay. Yeah, I, I I didn't I didn't say anything. They spoke up. I I think there's That six. was my is answer. There, is there my six? answer was 5. I think there's 6. Do you have any more names to I share? Don't, or? Why do I feel crazy? Okay, right and now? seven. I feel like they're. <laughs> <laughs> no. she's, I mean, she's telling. She's, she's trying to help us best she can. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Wait, Bre- well, Brendan would be like, "No, you cannot yeah. have any hints." I I wouldn't necessarily say that I'm trying to help you. I'm just. I know she's probably putting, misle- she's putting, misleading I'm just us. Putting thoughts into your head, you know. I'll be honest with you. I, I couldn't even tell you anybody from Purdue because I can care less about Purdue because oh, he's locked in. Oh, oh, that's all you have to do. I mean, that, that's the problem. You know, about that's other what Mungro always says when he doesn't know the yourself. answer to the trivia question. <laughs> 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 you call out like that? <laughs> okay. So there are six. I will tell you that so much. So I'm, I'm right then. No. <laughs> no. I said okay. Six. Well, I'll, I'll give it I to you guys. Names. I'll give a half point to each. <laughs> okay. Do you want the name? Are we ready for the names? Yes. How, you okay. are correct on Charlie Jones, Aiden O'Connell, Matthew Bergeron, and Garrett Williams. Got it. And you are also correct on the tight end. Woo! Is it Michael Mayer, or am I thinking of the wrong no, guy? No, that, yeah. is, that is not him. That was Notre Dame. What's Payne his name? Durham. Payne Durham. What a crazy name. That's a sick name. Sounds but like who's a movie number name. six? Yeah. And the third one is Corey Trice. Corey Trice. Congrats, Corey. I All right. Don't Look remember you. Because I don't remember him either. Oh, is he long snapper? No, no disrespect. Cornerback. Cornerback. Okay. All right. Okay. Fair enough. Good yeah. stuff. Good stuff. Great I like stuff. that. So, Final thoughts? Um, We're going to find out a lot Saturday. Yep. We're going to learn a lot. And when we're back here next Tuesday, I hope the vibes are as high as this week because, dang. It's pretty much how we found out, learned a lot last night with watching, you know, the Bills and the Jets. Yeah. Like, I mean, everybody thought Rodgers was going to, you know, unfortunately go Final thought injury. on that. that <laughs> fi- well, final thoughts on that, how, how we feeling about that. Because I feel awful. I, I feel awful. I mean, I, I obviously feel bad for Aaron. Yeah. Um, you never want to see him get injured at all, no matter what. Um, Play he, number four. Yeah. <sighs> it's like the good thing about it, you gotta look at you know something negative has. You gotta look at something positive. I agree, love that. Um, Wilson came into this thing, mm. you know. He it's all about Rodgers. He ended up, you know, 
pretty much playing the whole game. <laughs> yeah. And then winning the game at the end. I mean, he, he won. He, and how he, about they, the play to end it, by the way? Oh, my gosh. Oh, I know. The crazy. punt return. And the then return. the story of, was it uh, Gibson, right, is his name? Yeah. He just he barely made the roster. There was a video of him in Hard Knocks of him bringing him in, and they're like, he was like, I. that was the moment where, yeah. is he going to be on the roster or not? He goes in and makes that play. It's amazing. That's, that's Unbelievable. Crazy. Yeah, honestly, my only final thought about that, I agree with Mugro. It's like, of course, so horrible. Like, I, I feel so badly for Rodgers. I hope that he makes a full recovery. I hope this isn't the end of his career. I would think that would be a sad mm -hmm. way to end it. But it's crazy for the amount of hype and just media coverage and talking about Rodgers that immediately from this moment forward, it's not about that at all anymore. Yeah. It is about Wilson. And I know that there have been some conversations about they're potentially looking for other veteran QBs and they're seeking outside. I'm telling you, I think that at least for the for the near future, I think Wilson's the guy. That, and you don't you you even said it. You got your start because of an injury. I think this could be his breakout season. I really do. It, it, honestly, he could he could be right in the, you know, <laughs> you know, Aaron Rodgers, you know, they have him on this big, you know, hype and everything there in New York, but you know, Wilson, he did his thing. You got to give him credit. Um, you know, yeah, the coaches may talk about looking at other quarterbacks, but Wilson and his, the teammate, his, uh, teammates, they feel good about what they accomplished yesterday. 100%. Maybe he's not ready, but what other choice do you have? I think he's ready. <laughs> and he's ready for the day. Bills. He's ready for Josh Allen. Well, Dang. That's, well, that's the other thing. How do you feel if you're a Bills fan? I feel horrific. <laughs> I feel down horrendously. I feel so sad. Are you – are you – did that feel like a just a because week one's just week one's its own well, thing? Well, Josh Allen no. played a bad game. And, yeah, you but know, Josh Allen does play bad. This is not the first time that's happened. It didn't feel like week one. It felt like repeating history. It felt like it felt like the Bills have a team that could be a Super Bowl team if Josh Allen just does what Josh Allen can do at his highest capability. But you just never know what kind of a game you're going to get from Josh Allen. Three interceptions and a fumble, that is horrific. That is absolutely horrendous. That's probably the worst game I've ever seen him play in my entire life. It, it happens. It, it, you know, it, I know. It, it, it happens in the heat of the moment. You know, the fumble, he got a hit. Uh, it was a terrible hit. I mean, it was, I mean, it was a good hit, a clean, nice, good, clean hit. Uh, the ball just came out. The interceptions. It was you know, bad that, interceptions that, that, even, that, though. Well, the first interception I wouldn't count as an interception. Even though it was an interception, it's more like a punt. Because it would have been fourth down, the balls. Were it was great, kind of pinned him inside the five, yeah, right? Yeah. So that's <laughs> the, I respect yeah. that play so call. That, so that's you know you can get away with that one, but the other ones, yeah, you know they they hurt. He they was hurt. throwing it into double coverage. It just made no sense to me. There were certain times where I felt like he could have even run the ball and just grabbed the first down. I felt like it was mental mistakes. Like you could see it when he's walking off the field. Like he's given one of these. Like. Like, he just knew that he could do better. He just wished he wouldn't have thrown that ball. It's a play you wish you had back. I tell you what I did see, though, was the coach, uh, uh, Sean McDermott, uh, on the sidelines, pointed to him a few times, like, at his head, like, be smart, make better decisions. And mm -hmm. with, with saying that, he's taking unnecessary hits. Like, if you're on the sidelines, step your butt out of bounds. Do not try to, He got know, creamed shoulder, by three linebackers yes, on that one. on the <laughs> sidelines. Yeah. Yeah. Why are you doing that to yourself? <laughs> and he, another thing, too, that he's really big at doing is jumping in the air. He keep his feet on the ground. <laughs> and yeah, it's not like he's even in the one. He wasn't even close know, to the first down. He's he like, just, dude, you're still just, five yards out. He just tried out. to just jump. He just jumped. I mean, Just jump to I jump mean, at that yeah. point. I think it's so. hard to tame a player like that at this point. But end of the day, it's like after that, you have to say to yourself, I, I really need to start listening, listening to the coaches. So we'll see if it's a draw for concern. We'll check back in on that next week. We'll find out Sunday how they're doing. Orange Zone Podcast presented by Billy Whitaker Cars and Trucks. Thanks for tuning in. James Mungro, Samantha Cross, and Rachel Culver on the producer, Mike. I'm Tommy Sladak. We'll see you in Indiana. We'll see you in Indiana. Peace. The Orange Zone, sponsored by Billy Whitaker Cars and Trucks.